Our top story, the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank last week raised questions about what else might be lurking in the wider system. Within days, the market turmoil ensnared Swiss lender Credit Suisse, forcing it to borrow up to $54 billion from Switzerland's central bank. Now, large U.S. banks have injected $30 billion in deposits into First Republic Bank. U.S. banks have rushed to the rescue of the First Republic Bank. The lender is caught up in a widening crisis triggered by the collapse of two other mid-sized U.S. lenders over the past week. Analysts say that investors are fretting about potential runs on global bank deposits with contagion talks sweeping across trading floors. Yesterday, while Swiss giant Credit Suisse announced borrowing to shore up liquidity, the spotlight shifted back to the United States. The shares of First Republic, a regional lender, had tumbled 70% in the last nine trading sessions. Some of the biggest U.S. banking names, including J.P. Morgan Chase, Citigroup, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley, are involved in the rescue. U.S. regulators said that the show of support was most welcome and shows the resilience of the banking system. This week's actions demonstrate our resolute commitment to ensure that our financial system remains strong and that depositors' savings remain safe. First Republic Bank is not the first canary in the mine, but there are canaries that are now feed up, and those include things like Silicon Valley Bank, Signature Bank, and lots of worry about Credit Suisse, a storage financial institution. In a market, all prophecies are self-fulfilling. So if people begin to feel like a bank is going to fail, they pull their money and they tell everyone this bank is going to fail. And almost no matter how stable the bank was when the story begins, this begins to sap the confidence, deny the assets, and create a situation where also none of the other players in the market want to stand next to you or want to do business with you. A round of financing on Sunday raised through JP Morgan had given First Republic access to $70 billion in funds, but that failed to calm the investors. Worries of a contagion deepened with the demise of Signature Bank to follow that of Silicon Valley Bank, and depositors began moving cash to larger lenders. First Republic Bank's stock closed up 10% on news of the rescue, but its shares fell 18% in aftermarket trading after the bank said that it would suspend its dividend News of the rescue also helped boost Wall Street indices. Smaller banks also rebounded from the recent sell-off. The Federal Reserve has lent U.S. banks nearly $12 billion under a new one-year lending program that was unveiled on Sunday night. U.S. Treasury Secretary said that authorities moved swiftly to protect depositors at Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank. She said that authorities acted when they saw a serious risk of contagion that could have triggered runs on many banks. Well, we felt that there was a serious risk of contagion that could have brought down and triggered runs on many banks um, and that something, given that our judgment is that the banking system overall is safe and sound, um, depositors should have confidence in the system, and we took these actions. As per the United States Central Bank, the total outstanding amount of advances under the bank term funding program reached $11.9 billion on Wednesday. For more on this, we are now being joined by Syed Javid Hassan, who is an economic columnist and former chairman of the Economic Advisory Group. Uh, Mr. Hassan is joining us from Islamabad. Sir, thank you very much for speaking with Vion. Thank you very much for having me. Sir, banks coming to the rescue of banks. First, Swiss Central Bank rescues Credit Suisse. Now, consortium of 11 banks have come to the rescue of First Republic. Is the crisis averted or does it run deep? Well, we should start with the Silicon Valley Bank. For that, the Federal Reserve had to invoke the risk, <clears throat> systemic risk, risk exception for depositors. Now, let me explain this a bit. The U.S. banks have an insurance policy of 
about through FIDIC, uh, where there's about $250,000 of uh, deposits are insured by the FIDIC system. Now, it was felt that this would not be enough to avert the crisis on for other banks. So the, for the first time in a long period, the Federal, uh, Federal Reserve has invoked the systemic ex risk ex exception. So there's obviously a fear there is a systemic risk, and we are beginning to see that, as you've mentioned, Signature Bank, uh, federal, uh, the f f f federal bank, uh, all of these things. Now, on top of that, we have had the Credit Suisse debacle. Now, we have seen um, something like $120 billion of deposits being withdrawn from uh, Credit Suisse. Uh, the central bank of Switzerland has come and in, uh, allowed a credit line of $50 billion. Now, it remains to be seen if we have averted the crisis. Uh, the noise is the right one being made. The fact that $30 billion have come through the major banks in the, the U.S. to support the federal bank. Uh, all of that is, is good news, but it really remains to be seen whether we have averted the crisis because there's jitteriness among the uh, depositors. Uh, the smaller banks are seeing some deposits being withdrawn. You see one day shares going up. Then the next day, you again see shares sliding down. So I think it's a bit early to say whether the crisis has been averted. Uh, the, the fact of the matter is the depositors are nervous about the smaller banks all over. And because some of the lending policies have been very liberal, and, and there's concern that whether these uh, smaller banks will be able to sustain the, 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 the crisis there is. And there, as you mentioned, there's the self-fulfilling promise issue that uh, the, the, the fact that people fear that uh, there's going to be a, 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 a collapse, they withdraw money and that leads to the collapse anyway. So uh, I think it's good measures that have been taken by the Federal Reserve Bank in the US, the Swiss Central Bank, uh, but it remains to be seen whether or the crisis, whether in Credit Suisse or the other smaller banks in the US has been completely averted. Sir, uh Will these bailouts that are now happening incentivize risky behavior and, you know, foster uh, what is called too big a bank to fail mentality? I think, uh, I think we are already beginning, we are already seeing some effect of that. The fact that in 2008, the too big, uh, too, too big to fail phenomenon happened and there was a major pumping in of liquidity by the Reserve Bank uh, in the US as well as other banks across the world has probably fostered this uh, attitude towards uh, being a bit careless about lending policies. Even though there was strengthening and there was quite a lot of uh, uh, measures taken to avoid it. But the very fact of the matter that we are seeing what we are seeing with SVP and other banks suggest that uh, th 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 there has been a sort of fostering of uh, careless policies by the banks themselves. And now, as I said, I do not want to be one of those who actually uh, promote the idea of self-fulfilling pro uh, promise. I would like to think that the measures taken by the central bank, uh, both in Switzerland and the US and other banks across the world, will now contain the crisis, uh, but the contagion is there, there right. is fear among depositors, and we are seeing withdrawals. I mean, Swiss Credit Suisse, we saw a withdrawal of something like $120 billion of uh, deposits being taken out. Uh, you're saying similarly in the US, Signature Bank. So that is the problem. The depositors need to be somehow calmed. We are not sure uh, we have really uh, crossed that bridge yet. So uh, uh, let's explore that point a little bit further. What does this mean, what we are witnessing now, to the businesses with the deposits in these banks, what should they do? <laughs> that's, a, that's a really tricky question. Uh, I, I would want to advise every businessman not, not to start, not participate in the crisis and not withdraw uh, their, their funds, especially given the support that uh, we are seeing from the Federal Reserve as well as the larger banks. But having said that, uh, it is for the individual businesses to decide. Uh, you do not want to precipitate a crisis, but uh, obviously the, the the businesses and and individuals have to take uh, their own uh, their own decisions. And and uh, given that there is some degree of uh, concern about the lending policies and the riskiness of uh, 
assets there is on on the books of many of these banks uh, obviously every every depositor every business has to take its own decision and 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 they should be talking to experts as to the uh, health of the uh, balance sheets of individual banks yes uh, one final you question know, to you we, yes sir sir uh, sorry one know, final we question we know that credit suisse was very careless and 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 we are seeing the consequences of that yes uh, sir will banks once again get away without being punished for what some call a too risky a behavior <laughs> you know the thing is the problem is that if banks get punished the whole world gets punished we all get punished economy is going to a slump there could be a major recession we have just come out of covid so yes. while there is a inclination that you want to see a better behavior by the banks we certainly want to avoid punishment because that would punish all of us all right mr hasan thanks very much for speaking with beyond joining us from islamabad with Thank your you perspective